So I'm going to create a database in AWS. Okay. So RDS, AWS Managed Database. So for that, first we have to click Create a Database. Okay, uh, so here you can see that standard create and EC create. So you can select either one. So I'm going with the standard create. Okay, so uh, beneath you can see that engine options. So we discussed we have a six type of engines, uh, not car engines. Okay, Aro, Amazon Aurora. So this is managed by AWS and that is proprietary of AWS. Okay, AWS created that database. Okay, and MySQL. We can use MySQL or else MariaDB or else Microsoft SQL Server, whichever it is. Okay. So I'm going to create MySQL database server. Okay. So then we have to select uh, community. Okay, fine. Okay. See uh, templates like uh, what is your use case? For example, production or development and test or free tier. So if you select production, you can see that multi AZ DB cluster. It's available, right? If you select development and test, we can see the same option over here. But if you select free tier, actually we don't have any option. See, it is disabled. Right, so I'm going with the uh, free tier because I don't have like a uh, premium account. That's why. So then we have to select one DB instance identifier. We already discussed to identify your database uniquely across the region. So we have to create a name. So I'm going to create a database OSS Bangalore application. We can create any name. So this is my database identifier. So this database only for that particular application. Okay. Uh, next, I will select master username and this is the root username and password. So we can provide any uh, username and password. I'm going to add admin and password as admin admin. Admin admin. Okay, fine. So then we have to select uh, yeah storage types. We discuss as we discuss general purpose and we have a general purpose GP3 and IOPS one in the sense provision. Then we have a magnet. Okay. So you can select either one. Then allocated storage, we can select 20 or 30, whatever you want. Okay, you can create like that. So then maximum storage threshold, what does it mean? See, storage auto scaling. What does it mean? Ah, if you're getting more data, automatically it will scale up to 1000 GB. Okay, that is, see, out, up to 1000 GAB, it will scale. Okay, you can give a threshold value. For example, as of now, you have only 20 GB. But uh, uh, like uh, as per the uh, like uh, time, for example, over the time you might be get lot of data, and the data will be increased and the size will be increased, right? So automatically it will scale up without any downtime, minimal downtime. Okay. So then uh, compute resource we can go with the don't connect. Okay. So just leave about it. Then VPC you have to select one VPC for that. I'm going to select one VPC. I have only one VPC, or else you can create a new VPC for database. Uh, then beneath we have a DB subnet group. Okay, we'll discuss that later. So we have two options over here: public access, no, or yes. What does it mean? Yes. Private in the sense. So we cannot access from my local system. Okay. Uh, once you connect VPN or once you getting into that particular network, then you can access. So I will select public access. Yes. Okay. So then I will select VPC security group. You have to select one security group. And which port you have to enable? 3306 inbound or outbound inbound, inbound room. Room. exactly so i'll remove this uh, security group then i will add auto scaling see i've been already created a security group few weeks ago and that uh, security group is allowing all routes all traffics okay so then available zone you can select either a b c because mumbai that is supporting only three available zone but if you select in us northern virginia that, is, that will support six availability zone okay fine so then we have uh, Database authentication type either we can go with the password authentication you can create username and password or else whatever the password you have for your IA okay that password you can use to authenticate RDS so that also you can say that is not required additional configuration database option and here you can see what is it backups as we discussed we have a two types of backup one is automated backup another one is manual backup see if you select this automated backup so we have an option over here retention period so you can select seven eight nine whatever day you want and as well as the time as well see so you can see that choose a window and you have to select the time okay time in the sense when you want to take a backup 
okay for example a uh, utc time you can select like 9 o'clock 11 o'clock so that you can specify your way or else you can specify no preference automatically randomly they will select it and they will choose okay so next okay that's it we have to create a database just click on create a database and that will create a database fine so let's wait so it's creating it's, so it will take around two to three minutes so once it creates then we'll try to access the database but before i need to create a virtual machine to access the database from that virtual machine okay so let me go to my ec2 then i will create a virtual machine over there so search for ec2 and we can create this virtual machine anywhere for example if you want to create this virtual machine any other account that also possible you can create any other account okay then after you can connect this database from the particular virtual machine okay because we already given public access right that's what so i'll select ec2 madhi eh? no no not required okay so I'll, I'll go to ec2 then i'll create a virtual machine first okay so already i have a two virtual machine over here right so i'm going to create one more virtual machine so for that launch instance so i will call it as database and key pair name will select key one and i will select auto scaling group as a security group because that is allowing all traffic launch instance okay it's creating let me try to connect this virtual machine first so write it down connect through cla so you have to execute this command then only you can connect your database through camel in interface okay so i will show you two demo how to connect your virtual machine sorry how to connect your database through cla as well as how to connect your database through graphical user interface by using workbench or pg admin or else uh, php my admin we can use any two so write it down through cla through camel interface you have to use this command so first step you have to install mysql so for that execute this command m space install mysql m space install mysql so once you install mysql then you have to execute mysql mysql then space minus h host so minus h that is stands for host host name uh, you will be get one dns name from uh, word rds database okay you have to get the dns name then you have to paste over here i'll show you that then minus you what is the you user, user. username so you have to specify the username as admin because actually we created a user over there what is the username admin only right and you can specify any username you can specify ashik or you can specify jesse whatever you want okay so i'm going to specify user as admin then minus p okay so hit enter automatically you'll be get a prompt to enter your password enter password admin admin automatically it will connect to the database okay so write it down then okay okay so now you can see that uh, my database that is available so here you can see that i already got one endpoint or dns name see you can see that oss bangalore cuk ww1 random generated uh, dns name right or d endpoint we'll call it as uh, i'll copy this uh, then i'll go to my virtual machine so let me connect my virtual machine go to database then connect So now you can see that I successfully connected my virtual machine, right? So now we need to connect our database. 
see actually this uh, virtual machine i created in a different region wherever it is see now i created mumbai only but we can create in a different region so since we have a public access for our database okay so i think it's visible right kanundallo okay fine so let me become root first okay so what is the first step we have to install mysql right because if i execute mysql so i can see that mysql command that is not found bash right so to install mysql m install mysql minus y okay it will install mysql let's wait okay successfully installed let me clear the screen okay so again i will execute mysql let's see what happened so now we getting some error message right see error 2002 can't connect to local mysql server anyway we are getting some error right so which means we successfully installed mysql right so now uh, how to connect my database mysql minus what is the minus h okay i have been already copy the host name i'll paste over here okay then minus u what is the use what is minus u what is the username okay then what is the minus p password so we no need to enter the password over here hit enter and you can see that enter password on option over here right so what is my password admin admin, admin and that would not be uh, uh, appear over here because that will be transparent okay enter and you can see that successfully i connected my database through this virtual machine so this is we connected through using cli command interface okay so now i will connect my database through graphical user interface by installing php my admin okay so we can install php my admin on this particular server then i can connect my database so let's see how we can do that okay so for that i'm going to use docker over here so the reason is if we using docker so within a single click we can install php my admin you getting but if you using like uh, the arbitrary method for example uh, you go into install so you going to download the php my admin from website that will takes around half an hour to install right so instead of that i can use php my admin sorry docker over here okay so let me just install docker first so i'll show you like uh, what i'm going to do over here. see listen so first i will install docker okay then i will start my docker then i will run docker run minus minus name name php my admin and minus d that is a detached mode minus c environment variable pma arbitrary is equal to 1 and we can enter any server values over there that's what then minus p port number we can execute 8080 port number and that will connect php my admin see i'll just copy this i'll show you how i'm going to achieve this i'll copy this then i'll go to my virtual machine uh, then i will paste over here. listen see what i'm going to do So first, I will exit from the MySQL server. Visible, right? Okay. Let me paste over here. Okay. So first, that will install. Ah, uh, install Docker. So once it installed Docker, then it will start. Then it will run PHP My Admin Docker container. So let's wait for a couple of minutes. Okay. End. Okay. you can see that i'm able to uh, fetch image but it is uh, going to docker up then it is fetching the image from docker up only you need to copy and paste over there you don't need to do any further actions copy and paste okay because rest everything i already done that's all okay it is downloading from uh, it is downloading from docker up yeah successfully created i'll get the public ip address you can go to any browser then paste then what's the port number 8080 end and you can see that php my admin that is connected right only uh, it took around 60 seconds maximum right but if you downloading php my admin it will take around uh, 15 minutes 60 minutes might be okay because first you have to download http then you have to download php my admin then you have to extract that then you have to restart your system everything you have to do so instead of that you can use docker over here okay anyway uh, here you can see that server okay i'll get the endpoint name from my rds then i will paste over here So then I will enter my username and password, and it, it will connect our database server. So let me go to my RDS again. So here you can see that this is my RDS, and I'll get the endpoint name. Just copy this. I'll go to my PHP my admin, enter the RDS endpoint, and you what is your username? Admin. What's the password? Admin admin. admin admin. Okay. So then I'll try to connect login, and you can see that successfully I connected my database. 
right how many database i have over here here you can see that how many database 1 2 3 4 right i'll refresh how many database 4 right okay i'll go to my virtual machine then i will check how many database i have over there to check database first we have to connect our uh, mysql server how to connect mysql server mysql okay okay end admin admin and you can see that successfully connected right how to check how many database i have in this server show databases show data bases then semicolon end and you can see there how many database we have okay uh, information schema and same as you can see that information schema over here see in my okay in my php mode with information schema mysql performance schema sys right how to create a new database through goi sorry graphical user interface sorry okay create database then okay name so i'll create ashik db then semicolon uh, then enter so that's created a database so i'll go to my graphical user interface then i'll refresh and you can see the ashik db over here see ashik database has been created so which means either you can go with the gui or graphical user interface okay any doubt any doubt privately work ellarum work vpn work any doubt enik access yes